Hi guys, Marika here with another card tutorial and today it's the first video in the Halloween series and I'm coloring Esmeralda by Make It Crafty. This is a new stamp from Make It Crafty and I love her and she's so completely adorable and I just I had so much fun playing with her. I was really really happy that I got to play with her. So yeah. Yay. Um so this is the first video in my Halloween series. So there will be coming up a whole bunch of Halloween videos all the way to October 31. Um however, I will put other videos in too. It will be some birthday videos and and, and such but we start off Halloween now um, the first of September was actually the first day they served a pumpkin spice latte and for me that is full and that is the reason I colored her the way I did so um, we as I am in the make it crafty design team we are getting spoiled by getting these images a little bit earlier so I could record this video but also um, we get to see um, so is progress sometimes a little bit earlier than other people do and when she started telling us that she had this stamps she I'm like yeah I am going to color this with like she's gonna have a black uh, dress gonna have purple innards on the dress and then she's gonna have this green hair and then Zoe sh showed us her coloring of Esmeralda and I'm like no She's using those colors and so is she's the queen of Copics and I, I couldn't really compete with that so I decided that let's go in a completely different direction so first of all I chose a whole other kind of skin color I was thinking like witches have a tendency to have like green skin but I wanted her to look little bit more normal and not the green witch witch so I went for a kind of an olive skin and it's almost edging towards a dirty olive skin but I, I, I kind of like the combination I might actually be using this on other creations in the future uh, so I chose the E74 for the shadows because it's like this bluish um, bluish brown and I thought it would work great with this color scheme and then uh, E84 and then going up with I think it was E31, E30 and E50 so I got this uh, this kind of olive skin I kind of liked it for the innards and the kind of band on the hat and also her eyes I went for a deeper orange this is actually sort of a go-to color scheme. I usually don't have that many go-to color schemes. I usually kind of mix and match and try to figure fun out when I'm matching papers or whatever I'm after. But in this case this is actually the color scheme that I usually use for hair and when I do, do a really bright red head hair it doesn't blend as well the darker browns doesn't blend as well with the oranges but I kind of like it anyway so I decided I try it out this whole dress is a total mess when it comes to my blending I don't have any good of perfect blending um, if I would have put a layer or two extra on top of it I probably would have gotten a better blend but it took me over an hour to color it as it is <laughs> so I, I kind of like no we're, we're, we're having it in the state it is but I, I, I like it I like it though but um, when it comes to kind of the the folds and stuff I'm not an expert on folds I have learned some I picked up, up some uh, both from Zoe personally but also from her tutorial but I can tell you Zoe, she's the queen of folds. So if you want to see this specific character colored with the perfect folds, I will put the link in the description to the Make It Crafty uh, YouTube channel. If you, if you haven't joined it, do because 
Zoe is awesome. And she has actually a sort of real time. Everything isn't real time, but most of it is real time where she tells you how she places the folds, how she thinks about it. She's just awesome and she's actually really good at teaching how to color. I'm not that good at teaching how to color. I learned bit by bit, but I'm still leagues away from Zoe. And Zoe's also, she's the queen of Copics. So she's awesome what she does. So should really check her out if you haven't. So I can also say that there is a couple of things that I have done differently than she has. Not only placing where the folds are, but also I started out by covering the whole dress in my first color. And the reason for I'm doing this in this specific case has nothing to do with making it easier to blend because there are so big pieces so they dry anyway. But it is because I want to have the E15 to be layered several times on top of it itself because I don't want my highlights to be the lightest version of the E15. I want a darker version of the E15 so I kind of layer it on top of itself a couple of times to get that darker shade. Also, I want the tint in the E15, which is toward the pink, to kind of seep through the other colors. And therefore, I first layer a base layer that will kind of tint the rest of the colors. And then I add the other colors on top. So there is many ways of doing that kind of trick tricks but in this case I just wanted a very slightly bit of that E15 in the bottom. Uh, if I wanted it to be more apparent I would add it on top of it all but that would also um, make the shadows much much lighter because you would push down the pigment into the paper with the help of the E15 and you might also get some dodgy texture by using a very light pen on very dark on other very dark colors. But that is all experimenting and trying and figure things out. A few things that I thought about when I done this, um, but I didn't execute it as well as Zoe does, and I'm hoping to learn more about that, is that I added um, kind of light shades at one side of the fold on every fold because I'm working with very dark colors. Um, if I would let the kind of shadow underneath, for example, uh, at her bosom, if I would let the shadow underneath her bosom just go right into the shadow that is the rounding of the bosom, the whole part of the breasts will kind of disappear. So the trick is to add a slight highlight around the roundness of the bosom to kind of make it differentiate from the shadowing underneath it. So then it kind of pops out a little bit. But yeah, so is much better at doing that than I am. I'm still learning. I'm still learning, but it's fun learning. And by the way, this is the reason why I want to learn all of these things is because I really love how Zoe colors and I kind of want to incorporate a lot of her techniques into mine. That doesn't mean I will be exactly as her, but that is how I want to do. Coloring in different ways is nothing wrong with. It's not that Zoe's way of coloring is the right way of coloring, it's just the way that I aesthetically like. So if you like to color another way, or if you just color for fun and don't want to learn a lot, or if you color for fun and think it's beautiful when it's not as much shadows, when it doesn't have that contrast, because when I started out, I really liked the effect of very, very simple shading that just added a little bit of dimension and not that much dimension. Then you should color like that. 
Um, there is a lot of beautiful uh, artists out there that basically just use maybe two colors. They use one um, different colors for the kind of base and then they just add in the same color the shadows like a purple just for all the shadows and it looks gorgeous so my way of coloring doesn't have to be the right way of coloring just just a note so this is just how i feel is aesthetic for for me aesthetically yeah to finish this image off, I'm actually cutting it out. Um, Zoe has a very nice tutorial on how she does her background, which is mind blowing. I love her background, but I had an idea when I made this and I actually waited. I recorded the coloring the 18th of August and I didn't record the um, card making until I think the 3rd or 4th of September something like that. I think it was this week um, because I was waiting for some supplies to come in and I had an idea and I ended up changing myself halfway through but I did end up using a bunch of the supplies I bought so that's always good. But I'm using my cutter be scissors to cut out those little holes uh, uh, or cut out around her and the holes is a Martha Stewart craft knife and I like that because the blades are very easy to find you can buy them in uh, your local hardware, hardware store um, but also it has a very nice way of lying in your hand so we are doing a smudged background surprised uh, sorry but this I, I just needed to make a smudged background for this so I'm using my new um, pumpkin I don't remember what it's called I will have the links in the description but it's the pumpkin color which I didn't have uh, from the distress inks and I'm combining that with some rusty hinge and I'm doing that to get a little bit of dimension in the color by the way this is sped up twice the coloring was sped up five times in the cutting too but this is sped up twice because I wanted to get it in and show you how I do this without needing to have a very 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 long video. Now I'm actually checking in it's like do I like this background is it not something that's missing and what I felt was missing was a grounding part. So I'm using a new sprayer of mine I got one of these distress sprayers and I used way too much water on that part because I'm not used to how much water I get out of the squirts so I redid it and added more color more color and less water and then I um, heated the first heated it so it was dry and then I dipped it again and then I kind of got that grounding effect from the walnut and rust the hinge and to finish it off I'm going to add um, some splatters in espresso ground espresso you know because it builds a little bit dimension and I know that the bottom kind of looks like a hot mess, but as the witch is covering up most of it, it actually grounds her in a very nice way. I'm also using my, my new um, bone folder. That is an awesome bone folder. Everyone says that it's awesome and I've been like, yeah, how can a bone folder be awesome? But that is an awesome bone folder. I really, really like it. I am going to use that a whole bunch and I'm going to use it in just one second here because I'm using it to push down the watercolor cardstock. It's a little bit bent and I want it to lay flat perfectly on that card base. And I'm going to go in with this little, uh, my favorite thing, stamp set and write happy haunting. I probably will use these sentiments for a lot of my Halloween cards. It's a new set of mine and I kind of liked it. And then I'm gonna add a, a little bit of a bat on that to kind of give it a little bit, a little bit more. I end up just using one bat and a little bit onto the right edge. Um, I'm using the My Favorite Things um, Slate Gray, no, Steel Gray ink. Now I'm saying the wrong things again. The Steel Gray ink because it's um, it's not as stark at many and I double stamp it with my with the misty. I have a misty now 
I don't know why I waited so long to get that one. Yeah, I had a pretty big order coming in from Simon Stamp. I haven't had an order in, I think, six months or so. So, yeah. Put some foam tapes on the back side of her. And then she's done. And that is the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below, down below. You'll also find all the details on the card. Here are two other Halloween cards that I made for last year's series. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!